Hi guys, um, welcome back to our vlog. And um, yeah, it's been a really tough week. As you guys all know, Typhoon making things very difficult uh, to communicate. What do you have there? What do you have? So as you guys know, it's um, Typhoon. Communications are, are knocked out completely in the northern part of the hole. I don't understand it. I think it has to do with the towers, I guess. So, um, I guess the southern part of the hole, they've got some communications. They got smart working. Globe is out, out of commission completely. We have fiber. That's out because the lines are down and probably broken. You know, the tel that, that runs around, that runs along the telephone lines. So, I'm working on my visa to get back to the Philippines. I've been working on that for almost a month. Um, I mean, I've had the paperwork for a month, but you have to follow a process. Um, if you're a foreigner spouse um, married to a Filipina, you have to follow um, these protocols. Now, where it gets confusing is I'm traveling with a Filipino citizen. She's a minor. Um, it's up for debate whether or not I have to follow this procedure. I think I do. Some people said I didn't. Some people said you don't need a visa on your passport because you're traveling with her. She's a Filipino citizen, she's a minor. I don't agree with that. Um, I've read the, the instructions online a million times. Um, if you're a foreigner spouse not traveling with your spouse, you have to get a visa before you leave. Or if you already have one, like um, if you have a permanent resident visa or if you have a retirement visa, which I don't have. Um, I should have gotten it, and uh, but who knows that these things were going to happen. Uh, I didn't plan for these this pandemic. Okay. So in order for me to get my visa, I have to go on the Philippine consulate website of New York. Um, and you'll see here online, it'll say online appointments, consular services, other services, passport status, emergency cases. So I'm going to click on consular services under um, on, the, on the Philippine Consulate General of New York. You will click on consul, consular, consular services. Once you do that, um, you'll see a whole thing of um, uh, tabs. <clears throat> And you're going to go down to the tab that says uh, visa requirements, visa. And it's by mail only. Okay. So on this page, it gives you all the instructions for your category. My category, once again, is a uh, foreign spouse married to a Filipina. Um, so it says here on the top of the page, the Philippine visa is an endorsement made on travel document by a consular officer at a Philippine embassy or a consulate abroad. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then visa application is by mail only. Please see procedures below. Okay, guys. Um, please note that the visa issued is not a guarantee that the holder will be automatically admitted to the country. The admission of foreign nationals into the Philippines is a function of the immigration authorities at the port of entry. Philippine immigration authorities will not allow entry into the Philippine airports and seaports the following foreign nationals. Then it gives you a list. Da, 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 da. So, and then it goes on to say uh, the travel ban restrictions. Okay. Uh, foreign nationals seeking entry exemption uh, into the Philippines should get an endorsement from the oh, from the agency. I'm not that. Foreign nationals with family ties with the Filipino nationals and fall under these categories may request entry exemption in order to secure a visa. Legal spouse of Filipino nationals. Foreign parent of a minor Filipino national. Foreign parent of a Filipino national with special needs. Minor foreign child of a Filipino national. Send a complete documents to the visa section and they give you the email address uh, for pre-evaluation incomplete documents will not be processed 
the consulate will endorse the application to the Department of Foreign Affairs, the DFA. If the documentary requirements are complete and in order for final approval, all applicants are subject to the approval of the DFA. Once the approval of DFA is received, you'll be notified to send the visa application together with the original documents. Um, so uh, then it goes on to say all passengers permitted into the Philippines required 14 day quarantine upon arrival. Um, all that stuff is just, um, you know, uh, redundant because I've already been through that at the airports. It's all the same. None of that stuff has really changed. Uh, legal spouse of a Filipino national, duly accomplished non-immigrant visa application form 2A. I've already filled that out. I got that. It has to be duly notarized by a public notary. So it, that's the application. You know, you got to fill it out. It has your information on it. <clears throat> and it's got to be notarized. Okay, so that's one. Um, two, one recently taken colored photo. Uh, two by two, uh, front view with a white background, no eyeglasses or sleeveless attire. Digital photographs are not allowed. I got that. That's number two. Number three, electronic or machine readable passport valid for at least six months beyond authorized period of stay in the Philippines. Check. So that's one, two, three. Those are three things. Okay. Copy of the applicant's old visa expired. Four, I got that. Uh, you, you always keep... So in the Philippines, guys, um, they don't give you stamps anymore. You used to go to the cons you used to go to the immigration office, you pay your visa, your, your renewal, and they stamp it. They don't do that anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so hard to get a, uh, it's a little bit of ink, stamp, stamp it. They don't do it. So what they do is they just print out a little receipt with your visa stamp on the receipt. And you got to hold that. You're going to hold on to that. If you lose it, you can be in trouble. Um, so that's number four. So that's, let me just go back here. I lost my thought. One, two, three, four. Uh, five, legal proof of relationship. Now, legal proof, uh, Philippine Statistic Authority, your PSA marriage certificate. That is important. Not your local municipal certificate. That's no good. Um you got to get your um, uh, Philippine Statistics Authority PSA uh, marriage certificate. We got that in Cebu. Um, that was a very difficult thing to do. Took takes days, takes weeks, maybe months at this point. I don't know. It takes a long time to get that. Uh, report of marriage or marriage certificate with apostle if married abroad. Okay. Um, so I have that. That's number five. Number six. Copy of Filipino spouse's Philippine passport with a data page. Now, um, I have two copies of Lynn's uh, certified true copy passport. Uh, we did that um, for tax purposes for here in the, in the USA. So now I, I ha that I have that, I carry that everywhere I go. It's a true certified copy. Nobody can deny you with that copy. It has been sent to the DFA um, you send, what you do is you send, uh, what we do is we send uh, Lynn's passport uh, to the to the DFA in Cebu. Um, we actually had some relatives there. Uh, we we, we uh, overnighted it to them. They went to the DFA. They submitted the application for us, um, sent us back the passport. And then a month later, we got two copies of a certified true copy of Lynn's passport. So I got that. That is number six. Number seven, proof of financial capability of a foreign spouse, which includes, which is a late, the last bank statement, income tax return, pay stub, employment certificate, former employee indicating, uh, indicating position and salary. So you just need one of those. Um, I just do a bank statement. They don't, they don't say that you, they don't say, oh, you need this amount of money, you need that, that amount of money. I think they just want to see that you have some money. Um, so that's very, that's a kind of very gray area. So I have that. Um, number eight, round trip flight uh, itinerary. Uh, it says, please do not purchase a ticket yet. So <laughs> that's so confusing. So all I did was I went online and figured out a flight, you know, in January, and I printed out the itinerary and I submitted that. Um, so that's no. So number nine, a pre-booked accredited quarantine facility. I went on Expedia and I just found a, a hotel 
that has free cancellation. And I booked that for some dates in January. And I submitted that. So um, what I'll do is I'll cancel that um, uh, next week. And then once I get my actual visa and I know when I can fly, then I'll book everything. Um, and I don't even know. It says here you got to book it for at least 10 nights. And that's not true anymore. Yeah, I'm vaccinated. And uh, the protocols for vaccination is if you're fully vaccinated, uh, it's a less quarantine. But they keep changing it, so I don't know what it is. I thought it was three days, five days. Some say seven days. I don't know anymore. But the good news is that the protocol of the child, the minor child, follows the protocol of the adult. So even though Thea is not vaccinated, she will follow my protocols. Uh, so that's number nine. Uh, number 10, uh, proof that the Filipino spouse is indeed living in, in a current, currently uh, a resident of, the place, in the, Philippi of a pl the place in the Philippines. Please indicate the Filipino spouse's complete address and contact number in the Philippines. Uh, in order to do that, to prove, in order to get this proof, that's number ten. That's the tenth thing that you need. So we let off. So we let off on the tenth, the uh, tenth thing that you need for the requirements to get back into the Philippines as a foreign spouse. Um, <clears throat> I got interrupted um, when I was finishing the video, so we'll finish it now. Um, so the tenth thing. Uh, is the proof that the Filipino spouse is indeed living in the Philippines. And you need two things from that section. You need a Barangay certificate and you need a notarized affidavit by the wife. Um, some people have told me that they did away with this. Um, you don't need to get those things anymore. But I can't find anyone to give me that information. I mean, you call the BI, they don't answer. You email them, they don't answer. Um, so this is on the website. So I'm following the protocol that is on the consular's website. You would think that it is up to date and accurate. Uh, it is a government website. Um, so you will need a barangay certificate. You go to your barangay. Um, pretty simple, a few pesos, they give you a certificate. Uh, the other thing is a little more costly. I don't know if it's, what is it? Like maybe three or four or 500 pesos and you get the uh, notarized affidavit from the lawyer. Um, and it just says the same thing the Barangay certificate says, same thing. I don't know why you need both of those things, but you do. Uh, and lastly, number 11, um, to complete your application, you have to get a money order um, payable to the Philippine Consulate General, New York. Cash and checks are not accepted. Do not send cash or checks. Uh, $30 for regular processing, $40 for expedite. Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you right now, uh, you'd be wasting your money if you sent $40. There's no way they're sending this back in three to five days. Impossible. Um, just stick with the $30. You'll get it back in about two weeks, uh, maybe three at the most. Um, but I've done this before the pandemic. Um, it wasn't like, it was the same, other than the Barangay certificate and the notarized affidavit, it was still all in the quarantine hotel. It was still all the same. You had to send in proof of your of your round trip ticket. You had to do a bank statement. And I used to do this all the time before the pandemic, uh, when I would travel to the Philippines, I would get my um, uh, 60 day visa, 59 day visa before I left. Um, and then I didn't have to go to the um, BI for like two months. It was great. and. And I believe it was like 40 bucks, something like that, $45. I can't remember. Um, so this is no, I'm no stranger to this. I'm no stranger to sending in my passport to the consular's office, getting it stamped. Uh, there's just a few more hurdles to cross this way. Um, so, and the only hitch now is you've got to do everything by paper uh, uh, online first. Uh, send it in to the uh, email that they give you and you wait for them to get back to you, which they didn't. Um, I basically, after two weeks, I emailed them like every day, called, left messages. Finally, um, just last week, uh, someone had sent me an email saying that I was uh, cleared to send in my documents by uh, mail. And they just said, don't forget your financial capability. Maybe they didn't see it in my uh, email, but it was there. 
Um, so this wraps up, wraps up the video for uh, me uh, getting my visa. Um, everything is going out next week after the holidays. I don't want to mail anything right now during the holidays because there's a good chance it could get lost. <laughs> with um the passport is being you know very crucial i can't lose that and um no one else is on the hook but me uh if the passport gets lost and that's just the way it goes um so uh, i do have my approval to send in my stuff uh, which i'm gonna do right after christmas and then we'll see how long it takes to get my uh, passport back with the philippine visa stamp on it uh, and then we'll go from there. We'll book tickets and uh, we'll be heading back. And um, there's always a chance that we might not go. Uh, maybe something will come up between now and then. I don't know. I, I don't want to say 100% for sure that we're heading back. But I'm doing everything that I need to in order to get back to the Philippines. Uh, still no power there. Still no uh, internet signal. Um... Uh, I don't know how some of the vloggers are getting their videos up uh, because um, Lynn barely has a signal to even just send me like a, a four line message. Um, and I, I get like maybe one small message a day from her and it's a quick message and then that's it. No more signal, no more internet. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching.